there. So Masi, can I ask you to... Um, sure, <clears throat> sure. Um, it's my great pleasure. Thank you very much, Teresa, for organizing this. And thanks to Molly and Corinne for inviting me um, to act as moderator. Um, I uh, was Molly's PhD student and it's always a pleasure to go back to my roots, which I count her as my roots. Um, this panel is called Political Resistance and the COVID Crisis. Uh, we are very interested to understand um, the COVID crisis from different aspects, but tied into political narratives um, that um, permeate in different um, our lives in different ways. Um, we'll start with a series of questions, but they're really um, they, they, the panel is organized in a dialogical way. So we'll start with Molly Andrews, Professor of Political Psychology at the University of East London, um, Jill Bradbury, Professor of Psychology, University of, University of Witwarstrand, Witwar, Waterstand, uh, Johannesburg, uh, then uh, Catherine Kohler Risman, Boston University Professor um, Emerita of Social Work and uh, from the School of Social Work. And then we have um, my beloved Anne Phoenix, Professor of Education, Institute of Education, University of London. And finally, we have Corn Squire, um, Professor of Social Sciences, University of East London. Uh, we are going to start with questions, but before that, um, I will pass on to Molly to talk about CNR. And then uh, we have some announcements and then we will start with question and answers. Thank you. Lovely. Okay, thanks, Marcy. And um, yes, I, I, I wanted to say, first I'll just say a few things of how we're gonna run this logistically. And then I want to uh, move more to the content. So um, logistically, uh, I just wanted to say that I, it's, I've brought together onto this panel and indeed in the audience, there are just some really just wonderful contributors. And I've also been in other sessions and heard the quality of the questions and the papers. Our ideal um, thing at this point is really to set up a conversation. So um, although Masi has listed us in a serial order, we actually decided against, we only have an hour and a half. So we decided against anybody making a formal presentation. We've identified a series of questions that we would like to talk about um, on the panel, but also because we have such a great um, audience as well, um, and it's such an engaged conference, we really, really encourage you to ask questions and we will be asking each other questions. So logistically how it's gonna run is I'm gonna just say a few words now um, about the panel, about the Center for Narrative Research and about our relationship with political psychology. Um, and then I am going to turn over to Mark Freeman, who um, will be known to some of you um, in different capacities, but amongst other things, Mark is the uh, book series editor for Oxford University Press Explorations in Narrative Psychology. And literally today, I actually received, I was shocked, I received my copy of Corin's new book, which is called Stories Changing Lives, Narratives and Paths Towards Social Change. I have to say, I'm like, I'm so chuffed about this. Mark will say more, but just to say that there are a number of, all of the people on the panel and a number of the people in the audience are included in this book. And a lot of you have um, participated in, in different ways. So I'm gonna let Mark sort of say a bit more about that. Um, but in the meantime, let me just say, um, first to start with my really profound thanks for um, solidarity and collegiality and great warmth and strength that has been shown to us by a number of you, but not least being Teresa and Kesi, who invited us to do this roundtable. And we um, were really, really delighted and very moved actually to be able to do this. Um, I don't really need to say much about their work. I think a lot of, I think it speaks for itself. They're really um, wonderful scholars, um, but also to, um, to, to be, for them to actually reach out to us at this particular moment and to be honoring the work of our Center for Narrative Research, which is now in its 20th year. We, we started it um, in, uh, one in 1999, actually. So it's not, <laughs> it's in its 21st year, I guess. Anyway, and a lot of you, a lot of people um, who are here today have been with us from the start. And um, 
one of the things that um, we think that uh, political psychology um, in, in its richness, and we've seen this in this conference over the last few days, you know, it, one of the things which makes it so rich is its ability to actually employ different kinds of methodology to try to help us understand complex political phenomena. And, um, and I, I'm really indebted to Teresa and Kesey because um, amongst other things, they have really helped to put the discipline of political psychology um, on the map here in the, in the United Kingdom. I mean, um, obviously it's been, it's a, it's a discipline with a long standing history, but it's really, I mean, the, the idea that this is the third annual conference uh, and, and the, the range of the papers and how many people are here, it's just a complete, um, it's something really to be very proud of. And we are proud uh, to be able to be part of that. Hopefully what you will get come away with today, um, Kezi was talking um, earlier today about the importance of dialogic work and, and the complex different experimental methods that we use to try to really capture things which, which are not flat, which are anything but flat, okay? And I think that um, today we're gonna try to um, tease out some of that. We, we made as the theme, um, uh, political resistance in in COVID times, um, because we actually thought that that might be a particularly interesting way to focus our conversation. But it probably will um, spread out to other kinds of uh, political narrative questions as well. And we would, again, as I say, encourage you to ask questions. So um, I think that um, I don't want to use up our limited time. Um, I just, again, really want to uh, say thank you for inviting us to be part of this. We're, we're really honored. And I'm exceptionally honored to, um, to have not only the people who we have on the panel, but indeed our audience. It's just, it's just really, really fabulous. So thank you so much. And now to turn over to Mark. So Mark Freeman was, um, he was a friend of CNR before CNR existed. That literally is true. So we, we sort of became a center after we'd been doing a number of narrative kinds of things. And our first book, which was Lines of Narrative, which we published back, I think, I don't know, about 2000 or something. Mark was one of the first people in that. And, and since that time, um, he's then gone on to um, start an extremely successful uh, book series with Oxford, which must have, I don't know, something like 20 um, titles in it now. And um, so I've asked Mark to say a few words about Corin's book, because as I say it, I mean, I could just got my um, copy today. And, um, and, and that is the book series that it has been published in. So Mark, if you would join us, that would be great. Thanks, Molly. It's great to be here with all of you. And it's my great and really special pleasure to share with all of you today um, the publication of the volume that Molly just referred to, Stories Changing Lives, Narratives and Paths Towards Social Change. Um, yeah, I see Kathy's raising it. It's a lovely book. Um, and more important, of course, um, it's an excellent book and contains chapters written by a number of the people here today. Um, it also carries a dedication in fond memory of Elliot Mishler, whose work I'm sure many of you know. And I figured one of the best ways to introduce the book is to share just a few words um, about Elliot and about uh, a group of us that worked with him closely through the years. For many uh, years, a group of us from the New England area in the States, including Kathy Reisman, um, who's here today, Wendy Luttrell, who I see is here today, and others. Um, we all had the great good fortune of having our own mini society for narrative inquiry, um, in psychology and well beyond. Through the generosity, kindness, and care of Elliot and his partner, Vicki Steinitz, whose home in Cambridge, Massachusetts, we descended on nearly every month. It was there that we would try out new ideas, commiserate about the challenges we faced, and most importantly, benefit from one another's counsel and friendship. Leading us gently and wisely every step of the way was Elliot, 
who in addition to being a first rate scholar in narrative inquiry was a passionate and fiercely dedicated servant of social justice, um, hence his pivotal role in this particular volume. When I asked members of our group a while back for some choice words um, about Eliot for a brief piece I was writing, one person spoke of her joy being in his presence and quote, an inner light that helped me to feel respected, valued, and listened to. Another recalled the way in which he, quote, gave her the courage to stop, listen, and reflect on what people were telling me, to enter their worlds, respect the developing and unfolding knowledges produced. There was also talk of his extraordinary listening ear for words, stories, silences, and sighs. And in a related vein, his being exquisitely attuned to those little fragments found in interviews and the like, which could be, as this person put it, as telling, and in some instances, probably even more than the larger stories being told. And of course, people also spoke of his outstanding and significant research and scholarship, um, some of which, with the help of Corin Squire, um, is in the volume we're talking about. Um, in many ways, Eliot was ahead of his time, carrying out the kind of deeply felt qualitative work many of us strive for in our own research and also living out the kind of engaged, morally purposeful sense of commitment many of us aspire to in our own lives. That we and many of the other people here today were able to work and play alongside him over the years was a gift. He'll always find a special place in our hearts and memories. And this excellent new book, wide ranging, fascinating, well-crafted, important. This excellent new book will serve as a wonderful memento of Eliot's many and profound contributions to our scholarship and to our lives. And with that, I'll say congratulations to Corin, who edited the book, and to all of the contributors, especially those here today, Molly and Anne Phoenix and Jill Bradbury, um, who helped to make it happen, and Kathy too. Um, I'm delighted to see it in print and I'm really proud to have it be part of the series. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. That's really lovely. And um, just to say a small thing, and then I will um, turn over to Masi. Um, it, is, it is a real honor that Elliot Spirit is here with us. And also to say that, that um, it was particularly fitting in that book because that actually came out of one of the CNR symposia. We actually had two. And um, that came out of the CNR symposia, which I can't, it was maybe almost something like 10 years ago when we um, did something on political activism and narratives. And we had the incredible privilege of having Elliot here then. And, and the piece that starts off the book is actually, um, is, is, comes out of that. Anyway, thank you so much, Mark. And um, that was a real gift to come through the post this morning. Masi, um, could we now turn over to you and, and uh, begin our panel discussion in earnest then? Sure. Um, so 